Hi everybody, welcome to the second special episode for Prehistoric Facts, and this time the votes are in, and it is the Short Face Bear or Arctotus Simus, and, that, and this is the animal that we'll be talking about today. And uh, let's actually go over uh, the size of the animal. Let's let's go for that. The size of the Short Face Bear is basically the length is. Uh, Base, probably thir 13 feet long and uh, from uh, height and to the shoulder it's actually about about as tall as me probably as tall as a man uh, about six feet but if you actually s s let it stand up on its hind legs it's over 12 feet in height so this is a pretty big bear what, what we have to say it's one of the most muscular bears of all time, and we actually will in the ba in the basic um, weight the weight of the animal would have been over two twelve two thousand pounds. It's pretty it's much heavier than a grizzly bear, and and if we actually want, like to compare it uh, to modern day bears, it would have probably been in between of a grizzly and a brown bear. And that would have been actually a really good comparison for this bear. Um, it actually it actually uh, came into came on came into the scene about 800,000 years ago, and then it died off about 11,000 to 10,000 years ago. And that and that is basically the Pleistocene era during the Ice Age. And it is it is one of the most spectacular animals that we've that we probably have ever seen. And it is probably the most Dangerous uh, bear that would that we would have probably seen uh, in that particular time. And as for its diet, we actually, and scientists actually have a really good um, uh, idea of how to find out what it ate. They actually t took um, uh, pieces of bone and actually just uh, uh, looked at the the um, imprints of what it ate. Because whatever it ate is actually imprinted in the bones, and what they found out is that it ate a uh, mammoth, it ate mastodon, it ate a uh, North, giant North American bison, it ate uh, uh, some camel, it ate horse, and uh, a few other uh, kinds of animals. And a lot of people thought, and a lot of the scientists thought, like it was probably like this big honking predator that killed anything in its path. But you see, it's very rare uh, for carnivores to take down all sort, all different sorts of prey, and we don't find that because most carnivores are actually going to be able to catch whatever they feel like they can catch. Like lions, they only go after zebra. Uh, some smaller um, uh, cape buffalo, and um, and probably a few uh, gazelle and and uh, and a little bit of warthog, but they will never go after a full-grown elephant, and they'll, it's really risky for them to go after um, uh, like baby elephants, even though the baby elephants are really good prey for them to capture. But it's just not gonna. Ha it's not. It's rarely gonna happen. But the explanation, probably the reason why uh, the short-faced bear actually had all those animals uh, when it in its system, is probably that it is one reason scavenging, and it is probably more of a scavenger than a predator, and there, and it's pretty obvious just because. Uh, when we look at its limbs, they're very long and delicate, which suggests that it can probably run pretty fast. It probably might th run faster than a grizzly bear, uh, probably 30 to 40 miles per hour. But once an animal has very long legs and has humongous bulk, it is going to be very hard for it to run very fast, and also it's going to be hard for it to chase down prey. Now, I do believe the short-faced bear could actually kill prey if it had to, but for the most part, it would actually scavenge other predators' kills, like the saber-toothed cat, Smilodon, uh, the, the, gi the giant North American lion, uh, and uh, 
probably the dire wolves. Because those are probably the predators they would actually encounter uh, to steal kills. And uh, if we actually had to... Because since uh, early humans actually did come across the short-faced bear, they probably would have not stood a chance against it. Because it was too big, it was too ferocious, and if it, if we ever came, if we killed our own, if those early humans killed their own prey, the short-faced bear would have just come along and waited until the humans actually uh, probably carved up a little bit of meat that actually would have been on the carcass and actually just uh, uh, just basically try to scare the humans away by just standing up really high, showing how big it is, and uh, showing its big massive arms and big paws, big claws, and it's showing its massive teeth, and it just scare those humans and scare the humans away. Now, when we look at its anatomy, the anatomy why the anatomy is actually it has a very uh, big skull, short snout, wide skull, which actually is suggesting that it is it has a very strong bite. Its canines are really thick, and we can actually know that it has a very, very powerful bite force and it by estimating the bite force uh, we can calculate that the short-faced bear probably had a bite force as of probably had a bite force over 2,000 pounds which is much stronger than a grizzly bear and it's almost as strong as as a crocodile or an alligator and so this is a very powerful animal and its paws are actually about the size of a catcher's mitt or my head and these paws can do a lot of damage especially with their claws their claws are much longer than my fingers and th that is really those are really big claws and if if this thing actually if we if I stood at the, if I came too close to this animal it would have swiped my head off cleanly and it would have it would have been more of a blow than slicing my head off completely. It would just just hit me like right here by the force and it cr crushed almost all the bones in my skull and just completely knocked me down very fast. And that's probably the way it actually deteriorated predators is basic is basically just swiping those paws. Uh, right at the face of the predator to actually steal its kill. So that's probably what it mainly uh, did to to scare away predators. But it also would use its size. It would use its size to also scare away the predators. Uh, its limbs are very long. Its front legs are as long as its back legs, which is unbelievable. When we actually look at modern bears, their front limbs are shorter than the ones on their hind limbs because they're more designed for short distance uh, quick bursts of speed whereas the short-faced bear actually has much longer legs can work can run much greater distances but I don't think it actually uh, ran with prey very long though I think it probably can actually it can actually run a much longer distances in a straight line but if it actually encountered prey that actually had to make a sharp turn, it would have broken its legs. And that short-faced bear would have no chance whatsoever to capture its prey. And it, probably the bear would have died uh, just, by, uh, just by a broken leg or a couple of broken legs. And that's pretty much how it probably kind of hap kind of what happens when you have very long, delicate uh, uh, front limbs. And uh, when we actually look at where the fossils have been found, they've been found everywhere in North America. They've been found everywhere. Uh, they've been f found found as north as Alaska, as far as south as Mexico, uh, far as east as far as east as Florida, and as west to California and Alaska. The most famous site. Uh, of uh, Ice Age fossils is the La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles, California. That is an um, that's an uh, it's an incredible uh, site. It actually has many animals that have been trapped uh, 
by by the tar, the sticky tar, that actually once once the prey animal actually was going to go in to get a drink of water, its front limbs would have dug deep into this soil and they became stuck. And that actually caused problems for that animal to get out. And it caught it would once it actually tried to struggle to itself to get out, it actually would have send a distress call and that send all the predators toward the the tar pits. And like you had dire wolves, saber toothed cats, American lions, vultures, and uh, and of course the short faced bear. Now the fought the most and the, the car and there's very little uh, short faced bear remains in the La Brea tar pits, even though they have been found, but there's been very little of them. Probably it's because the short-faced bear never really wanted to go near the La Brea tar pits. Probably it never dared to go too close, but if it did, and it actually had the opportunity to go after that prey that has been sitting there, uh, sending that distress call, and try to kill it as quickly as it can, uh, it would have probably became stuck itself. And what the La Brea tar pits is actually classified as a predator trap. Once prey animals got stuck, the predators are lured in and then they became stuck themselves. There are more dire wolves, uh, fossils, more dire wolf remains in the La Brea tar pits over, over probably between 3,000 and 4,000 Dire wolf, rema dire wolf remains have been found, and there's only about 2,000 saber-toothed cat remains that have been found in this in the Librea tar pits. For a short-faced bear, there probably have been like about 500 specimens, probably. But it's pretty much uh, how it's been summed up: is that the short-faced bear is very rare in that area. And uh, when we actually look at where it might have actually been living more often is probably uh, living in the open areas where it actually can actually uh, smell its prey and also actually um, have much greater distance to walk. Now it would have large territory. It would have probably it would probably have, it would probably no other animals would have came close to this animal. Never would have came close to this thing. Because it would have been called the bully of the plains. You dare not get too close. And if a carno if there was only a single carnivore, that carnivore would have just bolted. It would have just ran off. Because there's no way that it was actually going to go up against a short-faced bear. If there's probably uh, like probably like many as six to uh, twelve uh, individual carnivores going up against one short-faced bear, the short-faced bear might actually have to think about uh, daring to go to try to defeat a group of animals. But it would scare off all the individuals if it killed one of them. So it would actually would have killed one and then the other members would have backed off because it just shows that this animal is way too powerful, it could kill us. So the short-faced bear is mainly a carnivore and it could actually uh, just mainly scavenge, not really kill prey that often, but even though it could kill if it wanted to. And prey, and I would say that the reason why it died off was probably environmental changes. And when we look at the end of the ice age, global warming is really becoming a, a huge problem. Uh, and also the prey animals were disappearing like the mammoths, mastodons, uh, the giant North American bison, and a, few gaz and a few gazelle and deer species, a few horse species that have died off. And, and basically there are very few uh, carcasses left. And the, the smaller uh, descendants of these, an of these carnivores would have taken their place. And that's the reason why brown bears, uh, polar bears, and grizzly bears, and black bears are pretty much the dominant predators uh, in North America and pr and I would actually say that um, if we actually had to bring the short-faced bear back to life today 
Uh, we would have given it some space, especially because I don't think we would have kept it in captivity. For to be honest with you, it it would have been too big and also would have been too powerful. You would actually have to put it in a in a concrete uh, enclosure so they wouldn't actually escape. And uh, and prop and I would actually say that since we're getting close to probably cloning an, a prehistoric animal, we would actually probably say that it's probably not. Po it's probably possible that we could bring um, some uh, prehistoric animals that probably have lived um, over 10,000 years ago. I wouldn't, I wouldn't come too close to the dinosaurs, but I would probably say that mainly prehistoric mammals would be the ones that we can probably bring back. And the short-faced bear, we, we would have stayed away from that animal as long as we can. All right, that's it for now. This is actually the second episode. So right now, uh, just... Our, the new list has been put up and for episode, for special episode number three and so far it is the it is Dino Hyas or this or the Terminator pig that is winning the votes and uh, so if you go on my Facebook page vote for go on my fan page prehistoric facts with Dino, Dino Chris vote for the animal that you want to see want me to talk about uh, on this on this on the special episode and also keep on voting uh, and keep on uh, sending me questions, uh, emailing me them. Email your questions about dinosaurs or prehistoric life at dinochris71 at gmail.com. And also follow me on Twitter. And also keep following on my fan page. And also for you, keep and, and all you out, all guys out, all you, all people out there, take care of the people around you. And also, you young kids out there, make sure to listen to your teachers, your parents, and your guardians. Those are your best motivation to have a good education. All right, that's it for now, and I will see you guys for the next special episode and the next episode of Prehistoric Facts. See you then.